joining us on this morning and we pray that you will click the share button and start a watch party with your family and friends. On tomorrow we will celebrate the holiday where we will remember Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and he is remembered as a civil rights leader that left a lasting legacy. His birthday became the first federal holiday honoring an African American when it was approved in 1983. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. is remembered for several of his quotes, and there are two that I want to share with you today. The first one is, the time is always right to do what is right. The time is always right to do what is right. And the other quote is, Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. As I thought about these quotes, they are still useful today. In Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 through 39, from the New King James Version, it reads, Jesus said to them, you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Just think about it. If everybody in the world would show love to each other, what a wonderful world this would be. We know that God showed us love when he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for us. I thank God for sending Jesus. And I thank God for smiling on me and setting me free through his son, Jesus Christ. We all have the freedom to do the right thing and to love our fellow men. The song says, God has smiled on me. He has set me free. He's been good to me. Help me sing, God has smiled on me. God has smiled on me. He has set me free. i 
Father God, we thank you now, Lord. We bless your name. We thank you for another privilege, another honor, another opportunity, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for blessing us and smiling on us. We thank you for another privilege to lift up your name, to glorify you, to magnify you, to honor you today, Father God. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless us as we come before you. Forgive us for our sins, Lord. Bless our lives that our lives will continue to roll on just a little while longer. Bless us, Father God, that as we go about your business on today, bless us, Father God, that we will hear from you and that your word will be real and that your word, Father God, will, will go from one person to the other. That we, Father God, will be blessed by you and that you, Father God, will get the glory. Bless us now, Father God, as we come to present your word. Bless your word to fall on good soil. And bless us to be obedient to your holy word. It's in the strong, mighty, powerful, and anointed name of Jesus the Christ we pray. And we ask it all. Amen and thank God. God has. God has Yes, he has. Yes, he has. God has. God has. Smiled on me. He has. He's been good. He has. He has been. Me. He has been good to me. Amen. Has God been good to you? Oh yes. Has God blessed you? Has God kept you? Has God made a way out of no way to you? We praise God for another privilege, another chance, another great opportunity to come before Him today. God has smiled on us. Yes. He has. He has been good. He has been good. He has been better than us to us than we've been to ourselves. <laughs> God has kept us in the midst of all these conditions. He has blessed us one more time. And we thank God. We thank God. Are you thankful to God? Amen. Are you thankful to God for what he has already done, how he has blessed you, and he has kept you? Let me tell you, he kept us in our right mind. Oh, Lord, there are some you. people this morning that did not wake up in their right mind. Yes, but God has given us another chance to lift him and to praise him. Yes, Let me call your attention again to Deuteronomy <laughs> chapter 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Today we'll be looking at verses 11 through 14. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verses 11 through 14 is where we are today. Deuteronomy. In the Old Testament, the book is Deuteronomy. The chapter is 8. The verses are 11 through 14. Deuteronomy chapter 8, 11 through 14. I'm reading from the New King James Version. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 11 through 14. When you found it, you would discover these words. <coughs> Beware that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments, his judgments, and his statutes, which I command you today. Lest when you have eaten and are full, have built beautiful houses and dwell in them. And when your herds and your flocks multiply, and your silver and your gold are multiplied, and that you have multiplied, and all that you have multiplied, when your heart is lifted up, and you forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, 
from the house of bondage. I want to talk about beware and don't forget. Beware and don't forget. Our mental ability is limited. Because we have a mind that is a limited mind, it is a finite mind. But sometimes we have selective amnesia. Many times we remember what we want to remember, and we forget what we want to forget. Now, it is true, it is true, if God doesn't keep our mind, we cannot keep it ourselves. But through it all, if we are going to forget anything, <clears throat> we must not forget God. Yes. If we're going to forget our childhood, if we're going to forget uh, what we went through in life, if we're going to forget that old mate or that old friend, let me just advise you today, you cannot afford to forget God. Yes. Yeah, our minds, our minds are finite mind, but the God we serve mm -hmm. is infinite in his wisdom. He is infinite in his memory. He is the all-sufficient God who forgets nothing, yes. and he does always remember what he has done for us. As we celebrate Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King's birthday, as we draw close to the celebration of Dr. King's legacy, we must not forget where God has brought us. Yes. Dr. King just didn't represent, he didn't just represent African American, black, Negroes. He, he didn't just represent us but his desire and his design was to bring all of mankind together. Can't you hear him saying today that he looked forward and he dreamed of a day that his four little children would not be judged by the color of their skin, but by, by the character that lies within them, within them. The content of our character is what we really, really want to remember. We ought not be judged because you are black or I'm brown or, or you are darker and I'm not darker. We need to remember what the man stood for. Mm -hmm. We need to remember that he stood for all humanity and all mankind. We are called, as we remember his birthday, we are called to remember and do not forget the dogs that were sick on many, just for the right to vote. We cannot forget that there were water holes that blasted human beings against the wall. We cannot forget the meanness that took place during Dr. King's day. We cannot forget Bloody Sunday where Men, women, boys, and girls walked across that bridge on Bloody Sunday, and they were beaten, many of them to death, and many of them were beaten unconsciously. We don't remember it because we want to get back at anyone. We remember it because our past dictates our future. Yes. It dictates our future because we know how to act in the present. We, we know to how to look back at our past. We reflect on our past because our past determines who we are today. And it gives us hope for a brighter and a very bright future. In the text today, we find Moses admonishing the Israelites to never forget God. I'm telling you today that it is good that we remember all that Dr. King has done. It is important for us to remember 
every march that he has taken. It is important for us to remember that he stood up for garbage collectors. He stood up for those who had the right to vote. It is important for us to remember. And we must not forget <clears throat> from where God has brought us. Amen. Because the moment we forget where God has brought us, we live in dangerous territory. When Moses penned this letter to the Israelites, he was trying to remind them that you cannot afford to forget what God has done for you. Just remember you were caught up in the midst of slavery. <clears throat> he says to them, you must remember that, that God brought you out of slavery. Right. You must remember that God has blessed you and protected you. You must remember that God has brought you through this wilderness that you have come through and no one did it but God. Right. You, know, you must remember, you must remember, you must remember how God walked with you, how God delivered you from snakes and he delivered you from the hands of Pharaoh. You must not forget. You have to remember. Yeah, you got to remember. You have to remember the fact that God has blessed you and kept you in such a way that you need to always remind your children what God has already done. Amen. You must remind your children. You must, in, in Deuteronomy chapter 6, he says, remind your children of of what God has done for you. And when you remind your children of what God has done for you, whatever you do, you need to get to a point in your life where your children do not forget God. Yes. He says, remind your children, remind your children early in the morning and by, by putting the word of God on the doorposts, mm -hmm. placing the word of God across their <clears throat> foreheads. He says, but we have to understand that oftentimes we find ourselves in danger of prosperity. Mm -hmm. My first point, my first point today is, my first point today as Moses outlined in this chapter, he, he outlines beginning at, at <clears throat> beginning at, at verse number 11, he, he outlined, he says, beware unless you forget. Mm -hmm. Beware that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments. Mm. He says, first of all, there is danger in prosperity. Yeah. My first point to you today is that there's danger in prosperity. For some of us, when we get a dime over a dollar, we forget that God has brought us. Oh, For some of us, when some of us get prosperity, we forget how God has blessed us. Mm. For some of us, when we get prosperity, we are needing to be reminded of what God has done with us. My first point today is there, there are dangers in prosperity. There, there are dangers. If you forget God, there are dangers in prosperity. Moses reminds the Israelites of the danger of the abundance of prosperity. In the wilderness, they had to depend on God. But for some reason or the other, once they were delivered from the wilderness, they did not depend on God. And oftentimes in our lives, we don't find it necessary to depend on God as we used to. Yeah, yeah, as long as we were fighting to vote, as, as long as they were marching for the right to vote, as long as they were getting beat up uh, because they wanted to vote, they depended on God. But here we are today. Here we are today. We have the right to vote. We have the privilege of voting. And some people neglect that very right. Mm -hmm. My first point, my first point is there are dangers in prosperity. There are dangers in prosperity because men sometimes disregard God. The dangers of prosperity is when we disregard who God is. There are dangers in prosperity because God is disregarded even today on every hand. 
We've gotten to a point in our lives where, where we, we have what we want to have. We, we do what we want to do. We live where we want to live, but we have disregarded God talking about the dangers of prosperity. First of all, in these dangers of prosperity, once we get become prosperous, we forget about God. We disregard God. The second thing we do in under the dangers of prosperity, the next thing we do, we are disobedient to God. Look at what he says. He says, beware that you do not forget the Lord your God by not get, keeping his commandments. Without keeping his commandments, we are disregarding God. When, when we, dis, we are disobedient, when we don't walk with God, when, when we don't obey the commandments of God, we understand that God has no place. This word commandments means the ordinances, the precepts, the laws of God. God has some precepts. God has some laws that we ought to abide by. It is dangerous for us to have prosperity if we disregard God. Right. Then when we're disobedient to those commandments, we're, we're disobedient to his judgments, we're disobedient to his, his statutes, then we have a problem. That's right. See, prosperity brings about some things. The other day, I heard a young girl heard that a young girl said, "I wish my family member had not been so rich. I had not been so prosperous, mm -hmm. simply because be, that family member was prosperous or is prosperous. So the rest of the family turns against him, tries to connive him, and try to get his stuff." So that, long, that young girl said, I wish my family member wasn't so prosperous, wasn't so financially successful. Then my family member would be present with me. And my family member, even though he's still living, he wouldn't be going through what he's going through. So there is some danger in prosperity. Under these dangers of prosperity, don't, don't disregard God. Under these dangers of prosperity, don't be disobedient to God. Don't be disobedient to God. And my third thing, under these dangers of prosperity, don't have distractions from God. In prosperity, there are things that can distract us. In the midst of our prosperity, we, we may get to a point where we're just like the Israelites. We have to be warned to make sure that these dangers of prosperity don't distract us from God what it says. Beware that you do not forget the, the, the Lord your God. This God, this Lord, this God is the one who has kept you. He's the self-existing God. He's the God who makes a way out of no way. He's the God that was here before time got here. He says whatever you do, there's dangers in your prosperities and don't be distracted from God. Don't be distracted. Don't be distracted. He, he says, keep his commandments. Keep his judgment. Be reminded of his statutes, which I command you today. Lest when you have eaten, lest when you are full, lest when you have eaten and are full and have built beautiful houses and dwell in them. He says to us today, the God that we serve is worthy to be remembered. That's right. The God that we serve, we cannot allow things and people and places to distract us from that God. He's God. He is God all by himself. He says, don't you get to a point where you've eaten and you are full. Oh. And then you forgot where the food came from. Oh. Moses reminded them earlier that I talked to you about on last week. Moses reminded them that when you were hungry in the wilderness, God brought you manna from heaven. He brought you bread. He brought you food that your ancestors never had a chance to eat, that your ancestors didn't know anything about. He says, whatever you do. Don't forget God and, and don't forget his commandments. Don't forget to be obedient unto God. Says because that's great danger. Verse 13, he says that, verse 12, he says, uh, you've already built beautiful houses. And you, you live in those beautiful houses. 
and you have a big, you're at great rest in these beautiful houses. He says, when you get in these beautiful houses, <laughs> when you get it, a chance to dwell in these beautiful houses, don't forget God. Yes, yes. Whatever you do, keep remembering the God who has brought you. In your house, in your house, you ought to do like I used to do for my first, my first apartment. <laughs> my first, my very first apartment, <laughs> it was, it was over, over off, off Gessner in, in Houston. My very first apartment, the apartment that I bought, I, I rented on my own. <laughs> the apartment that I got with my own credit, <laughs> the apartment that I got because of my own job, I sit around after I got it decorated with my bachelor furniture. You know what bachelor furniture looks like, don't you? It's, it's a brown couch. Matter of fact, it's a dark brown couch in a, a matching love seat in a matching chair. Not a recliner because it's my first. It is dark brown because it is a manly color. And it's dark brown because you can't see all the stains if I spill something on it. You see, when you're a bachelor and you get your first apartment, you don't have money to be substituting stuff out and you don't have money to be cleaning stuff up and, and you don't want it to look like the ghetto, so you get brown carpet, brown furniture, and it's dark. <laughs> then I had a little glass table that I went down to. A friend of mine told me that I could go down there and get me a table with four chairs for $185. <laughs> I went down there at, at, at the flea market, down there off West Park, and, and I got me a, a, a table, a glass table. Never had a glass table before in my life. I had me a glass table with chairs, and you can see everything that goes on. You can even see the spots on the floor if you needed to. It was a glass table, and it was four chairs for $189. And after I got my living room set up, then I had a bed. It, it wasn't a big bed. It was, it was just a queen-size bed because that's all I needed to sleep in on my own. I got me a little queen-size bed, and, and then I, I had, that, had that bed, and I had it decorated. I had the covers. I, I didn't have what y'all have now, shimmies on it. I, I didn't have that cover that, that you pull up on you. I had a spread. And I had this spread and it pulled up on me. And I had air condition and heat. And I had a walk-in closet. What I'm trying to tell you, when you get your beautiful houses, you need to act like I act when I got my first apartment. I went in the living room. I looked around. I went in the bedroom and I began to gaze around. I, I looked in the closet. I saw clothes hanging in the closet that I had bought with my own money. I looked at the bed that I had bought with, through my own job. I, I looked in the living room and I saw furniture in there and I sit in that little chair in the living room. And I just broke out laughing. I started laughing. <laughs> yes, thank you, Lord. And then I got on my knees. Bow down before the awesome and the amazing God and just thank him for what he has already done. I thank God. I thank God for bringing me 600 miles with no family in sight. I thank God for friends that will help me get set up and, and friends that would advise me on, on how to buy the cheapest furniture. And not only was it cheap financially, it was cheaply built. But the fact of the matter is, I knew that God has blessed me with it. Got on my knees and I began to talk to the Lord about it. I went down there for a few moments to thank him and ended up being down there for hours just thanking God and, and crying out to him and, and blessing his name for, for bringing me somewhere from, from 12,000 people to 3 million people. Bringing me somewhere where, where I could have a job to work in and I can use my skills that I went to school with and for. Right. I just spent some time thanking him. I told you on last week, we need to praise the Lord for what he has already done. Today, Moses says to us, don't forget God. Don't forget when you've eaten and you are full and, and you dwell in your own beautiful houses. Don't forget God. Verse 13, he says, and when your herds and your flocks 
multiply and your silver and your gold are multiplied and all that you have is multiplied. Don't forget God. Mm. You see, flocks and herds represent status. You see, you're the big guy in the community if you got a lot of flocks and herds. Your flocks and herds, your cattle, your, your livestock, whenever you have a multiplicity of these flocks and herds, then you're recognized in the community as somebody. Yeah, when you got flocks and herds, you, you're somebody. You, you can walk with the chest out. You can walk with your head up. If you have a flocks and herd group and they begin to multiply, the tendency is you will forget God. My first point to you today was uh, there are dangers in prosperity. My second point is we must be determined to stay focused. Yes. There must be determination. We must have a, a determination to stay focused. When, when we have flocks and herds, when, when we have a big status in our life, we need to know that God has brought us and recognize who God is. Mm -hmm. It says that when you have flocks and herds and your flocks and herds are multiplied and your silver and gold are multiplied. Now, silver and gold represent finances. Silver and gold represented money. Silver and gold is when you have some when you wish you had some before. He says when you were in the wilderness, you had silver and gold, but you had no place to exchange it. Because God told Moses, when, when, when Pharaoh, when you go to Pharaoh, and he's gonna, his heart is going to be hard. He says that I'm going to have to prove to Pharaoh that there is a God on the side of the Israelites. He says, and when, when I harden his heart, he's going to want you to get out of there, and he's going to give you silver, and he's going to give you gold, so you leave out of there. When you leave out of there, you're going to be rich. You're going to have some money. Moses warned the Israelites, as I warned you this morning, don't be distracted, yes. but be determined. Yes. You must have this determination to focus on God. You must have the determination to stay focused on God. Don't fall into the dangers of prosperity. Have determination to stay focused. Yes. The way you stay focused, the way you're determined to stay focused is to remember God. Hmm. Remember the God who has brought you. Remember the God who has kept you. Remember the God who has blessed you. Remember the God who is continually giving us what we need every day. Determination to stay focused. You must remember God. Then you must respect God. You must respect him. You must respect him. He says when you have money, whatever you do, don't forget who God is. Have a determination to stay focused on God. Remember God. Respect God and respond to God. He says, he says don't, don't forget. Don't forget. Uh, beware and don't forget. Be mindful and don't forget. Be assertive and don't forget. Remember and be adamant about serving and remembering God. The problem these days, we have money. We have houses. We have all the increase that we need. God is multiplying everything we have. We have sealed houses. We have beautiful houses. We, we have gold and silver. We have livestock. We, we have flocks and herds. And these things have multiplied over the years. Some of you got clothes that you have accumulated. And now you have to step over them. To get, you have to walk over them to, to get around to what you really need. The Bible says, Moses says, and I say to you today, don't forget God. He goes on to say, verse number 14, when your heart is lifted up and you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage. My final point to you today is deliverance from captivity. God has delivered us from captivity. Now, captivity is not just a, a place. Captivity is a condition. Captivity is a lifestyle. 
Captivity is a state of mind. Yeah, yeah, captivity. Captivity is just not a place that you've been locked up in. Captivity is a condition. What is the condition of your heart, Moses asked this morning? What is the condition of your heart? He says, when you've been blessed with houses, when you've been blessed with flocks and herds, when you've been blessed with silver and gold, when God has brought you out of what you've been through, he says, beware and don't forget that God is the one that delivered you from captivity. He says, verse 14, when your heart is lifted up. You see, what he's talking about here is the fact that sometimes when we arrive, we think we arrive on our own. I, I listen at people. I listen at people who are coming out of the hospital and their family members declare that they were fighters. The reason why they won the victory over COVID-19 is because they are fighters. They have the audacity to fight their way through this virus. And some people, when they come out of cancer, they have the audacity and the gall to say, I did it. I'm a cancer survivor. I have made it, and I have done it. Mm -hmm. uh, Moses warned us today that when we come out of COVID-19, when, when we come out of cancer, when we come out of HIV, when there's a cure for all of the like, you need to remember mm -hmm. that you didn't do it. He says when they come out, now as long as they were in, they were calling for the prayer warriors, and the prayer warriors were lifting them before the Lord, and as long as they were in, they were calling on God. That's right. The prayer warriors were calling on God. They were blessing the Lord. They were saying to the Lord, Lord, if you get me out of this, yes. I'll serve you the balance of my day. And the moment they have an opportunity to witness to all of the world, mm -hmm. they said, I kept on fighting. Wow. Don't you know it, it wasn't power in your fight? Mm -hmm. Don't you know it had nothing to do with your fight? The determination that we have must be to stay focused on God. And the deliverance from captivity comes from God. If we're going to be, we're going to have deliverance from captivity. If we're going to be delivered, sometime we need to be delivered from ourselves. If we're going to be delivered from ourselves, we must know that God did it and God alone did it. You could have taken all the medication you wanted to. You could have had the best doctors you could afford. Yes. You could have had the best nurses that your insurance would let you have. But if it had not been for God, yes, if it had not been for the Lord on your side, you, you still would be in the midst of captivity, bound by this awful disease. And that's why Moses said to us on last week, Moses said, come on and praise the Lord. You ought to honor him for what he has done. He's brought you out of the wilderness. Your clothes did not wear out. Your feet did not swell. Come on and bless the Lord. That's right. Says, you forget the Lord, your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, who brought you out of captivity. It was the Lord that's brought us out. We're pushing toward African American History Month. We are remembering Dr. King and how he stood for all of us. We must understand that it was God mm -hmm. who brought us out of captivity. Deliverance from captivity. First of all, it was God who brought us out. Secondly, it was God who has blessed us. Let me just say to you today, it's God that has blessed us. It's God who allows you to move. It's God that allows blood to run from one extremity of your body to the other. It is God that allows your heart to pump, and, and it is God that allows your blood to flow freely. It is God that allows you to inhale and exhale, yeah. inhaling oxygen and exhaling carbon monoxide. It is, carbon, it is God. Yes, yeah. It's God that keeps us. It is God who has kept us. Yeah, we were in captivity. With no God on our side. We were in captivity and, 
and God was, was watching us. God says to Moses, if you're listening to your Bible reading, if, if you're listening to your, 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 your stuff, you, you understand if you're listening, if you're listening to your Bible daily, we're at the point where God has spoken to Moses. Mm. And, and Moses began to give God all kind of excuses. <laughs> he said, God, I'm not qualified to go before Pharaoh. He said, okay, I'll send Aaron with you. He'll be your mouthpiece. And Aaron would not only speak for you, but he will also speak for God. I come to you today by the anointing of God, speaking for God, and reminding you, beware and don't you forget. Yes. Beware, beware and don't you forget. Beware and don't you forget how God has blessed us. Beware and don't you forget how, how God has, has reminded us that there are dangers in prosperity. Don't disregard who God is. Don't, don't be disobedient to God. and Don't be distracted from God. Have the determination and, and stay focused. Remember God, respect God, and respond to God. And remember that there is a deliverance that comes from God himself. God has brought us out. God has blessed us, and God has kept us. Amen. Yeah, we were in captivity a long time ago. We were in captivity over 2,000 years ago. We were in spiritual captivity. We were locked up and locked down. We, we, the devil had his way with us. The devil had, had us as, as his little pawn. But over 2,000 years ago, Jesus brought us out of captivity. I want to tell you today that over 2,000 years ago, Jesus took a tree and he marched up Calvary's hill. He died on a skull hill called Calvary. He was delivering us from captivity. Yeah. They killed him on the cross. They reached up and pushed up the cross. And Jesus has said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men Amen. unto me. He died on a skull hill called Calvary to deliver us from captivity. They took him off the cross, laid him in a borrowed tomb. It, it was a borrowed tomb because he didn't need it too long. It was a borrowed tomb because early that third day morning, he gave Joseph back his brand new tomb. The Bible says that early that third day morning, he rose with all power and heaven and earth in his hand. Yes. He was setting us free from bondage. He was setting us free from captivity. He was delivering us from Egypt, the Egypt that we were caught up in. Our sins had made us messed up. Our sins had led us far away from God. We, we had disrespect for God. We had disobedience unto God. We have to get to a point where we realize that over 2,000 years ago, when Jesus died and rose from the dead, he set us free. And he that the Son set free is free indeed. Yes, the Lord Jesus himself rose from the dead for you and for me to set us free from captivity. Mm -hmm. He's done it for me. <laughs> Has he done it for you? There may be somebody listening to me today who is still bound by the devil's chain. There, are, there may be somebody listening to me today who, else, who is still struggling in your sin. I recommend Jesus. I recommend Jesus and Jesus alone. It is Jesus that has gotten up. It is Jesus that has blessed us. It is Jesus that has kept us. The door is open. The door. The door is open. The door is open. The door is open. Jesus says, come. God says, come. The Holy Spirit says, come. The door of the, the church is open. Amen. You need to try Jesus. You've tried her. She left you. You tried him. He disrespected you. You've tried them. They walked away from you. I recommend Jesus, the one who has paid the price to set you free. The one who has paid the price to pull us, pull us out of bondage. The one who has paid the price to deliver us from our sins. Jesus has delivered many of us 
from our captivity. I hear you, but you're saying, preacher, you don't know how deep I'm in. I say to you today, I've been there. I've done that. I got the t-shirt, the cap. I even got the tie. I say to you, trust Jesus. The door is open. The invitation is extended. I may not ever walk through the White House, but I thank God I'm able to walk through his house. I may not ever sit on the throne down here, but God has made it available through Jesus Christ where I can worship around the throne over there. You may be in captivity today. Your bondage may be great. You may have the handcuffs of hell on your hand, but Jesus wants to set you free right now. Just trust Jesus as your personal Savior. And he will deliver you. All you have to do is repeat this simple prayer. Trust him. Trust him. Repeat, repeat this simple prayer after me and invite Jesus into your life. Will you join me in prayer? Just repeat after me. <clears throat> Lord Jesus. I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We believe if you prayed this prayer, you are now born again. You're on your way to heaven. Of course, you need to be in a good Bible teaching church. And I recommend the New Beginning Church. You can join by live through by broadcast, just inbox me and let me know that you want to be a member of the New Beginning Church. We'll be glad to usher you into your new church home. And there may be somebody who's present with me today who struggle with sin just like I do. Every time I would to do good, evil is present with me. I say to you today, even though you're saved, you have to live a sanctified life unto the Lord. Let me pray with you. Father God, we thank you for these who have come. We pray that you strengthen them, bless them, deliver them from the wiles of the devil. Deliver them from the captivity that the devil has bound them in. And Lord, we will be careful to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. If you've received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, please inbox me and let me know. I want to rejoice with you. If you've rededicated your life to him today, please inbox me and let me know. I want to rejoice with you. If you've joined the New Beginning Church, inbox me or you desire to join the New Beginning Church, inbox me and let me know. We'll be glad to welcome you to the family of faith, your newly found church home. Thank you so much for listening to us. Thank you so much for being a part of this broadcast. I want to say to all that is listening, please share this video. Please start a watch party. Please be determined to share Christ. And whatever you do, beware and don't forget. It is now offering time, and it's time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. It is time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. You can give to the Lord, and you, you ought to give. God has continually blessed us. Come on and give 
to the Lord himself and bless him for what he has already done. Celebrate with the Lord through your tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. You can do so one of three ways. You can join by Cash App or give rather by Cash App. Our cash tag is NBC Soul. Cash tag NBC Souls. Dollar sign NBC Souls. Or you can give by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting dot jesus at yahoo.com lifting dot jesus at yahoo.com or you can mail your offering to the new beginning church p.o box 503 missouri city texas p.o box 503 missouri city texas 77459 p.o box 503 missouri city texas 77459 Thank you for joining us here. We're here every Sunday on the same broadcast on Zoom as well as Facebook Live. Thank you for joining us at 1045 today. And you can also join us for Sunday School. You can join us for Sunday School every Sunday at 9 a.m. Same station. Or you can join us and you can join us on Wednesday night at 7.20 p.m. every Wednesday. Again, thank you so much for being a part of our service on today. Please be reminded. Please, ma'am, please, sir, be reminded. Beware. And don't forget. As I mentioned to you earlier, we are doing our Bible listening program corporately. Our corporate Bible listening and journaling program that we're doing for this year. We're asking every person to listen to the Bible daily. Uh, I have a schedule out there. If you need to schedule and you haven't seen the schedule on Facebook, uh, text me, call me, inbox me, and let me know that you need to schedule. Uh, we just finished the book of Genesis. We just entered into the book of Exodus. So we need to make sure that we understand the word of God. There is no substitute for the bone structure of the Word of God. We want to get the Word of God in our spirit, get the Word of God on our paper, and get the Word of God in our hearts and minds. I'm also sending out to you the daily reading, which is very short, the daily reading for our Sunday school lessons. We read daily, and it leads right up to our Sunday school lesson. If you're not a part of that list, Please let me know that you want to be a part of that list, and we'll make sure that, that you are blessed with it. Whatever you do, just remember, beware, <laughs> and don't forget. Beware, don't forget the dangers of prosperity. There are dangers in prosperity. Don't disregard God. Don't be disobedient to God. Don't have distractions from God. There's determination we must have. Determination to stay focused. We must remember God. We must respect God. We must respond to God. And finally, we must remember that Deliverance from captivity comes from God. God brought us out. God blessed us. And God kept us. Thank you so much for being a part of the New Beginning Church service. Here at the New Beginning Church, we are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, In I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John 12 and 32. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. 
We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for delivering us. We thank you, Lord, for pulling us away from the distractions. We thank you, Lord, for the determination to worship you. And we thank you, Lord, for what we know, Father God, that as we move away from the distractions and the disobedience, you are able to keep us, to bless us, and to deliver us. Lord, we thank you now. We pray your choice blessings upon every person. Every person who's bereaved, every person who is struggling, every person who is going through some trying times, we ask you to bless them in the name of Jesus. Thank you for Sister Davis and how she has continually blessed the people of God. I thank you, Father God, for blessing her to keep moving, keep walking with you, and keep trusting you. I thank you for building for me a helpmate who is always concerned that God's word goes forth. Now, Lord, we ask you to strengthen the New Beginning Church. Keep us together. Keep us united. Keep us unified. Keep us on one accord. Keep our minds, Father God, focused on you. Bless us as we give unto you that you will continue to give unto us. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, Unto him, the only wise and only true God. Unto him be power, be glory, and dominion. Until we meet again, let us say together, Amen, Amen, and Amen. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. Don't forget, be aware, keep God first in your life. 